MI5 has issued a rare alert warning MPs of a woman who's been working as an agent for the Chinese state and trying to influence British politicians. How did this alleged agent of the Chinese Communist Party gain influence at the heart of British democracy? Well, that's a good question, and we're going to try to answer it on this program. Here's the story so far. A couple of weeks ago, British intelligence, MI5, warned Parliament that a Chinese spy was trying to influence British politics. They identified the alleged spy as Christine Lee, a 58-year-old solicitor who's been living in the UK for decades. She's reportedly been working for the Chinese Communist Party, whilst at the same time cultivating relationships with senior British politicians. The strange thing is, the Times newspaper covered all of this five years ago. The links to the Chinese state and her massive donations to a number of British MPs. Beijing denies the allegations, but there are politicians here in London who say this story proves the threat from China is real and growing fast. This is really serious. I am genuinely concerned and shocked the Chinese government poses a clear and present danger to us. A spy for the Chinese Communist Party found deep at the centre of the Palace of Westminster. MI5 has issued a rare alert about a named individual. The security service said that Christine Lee was engaged in political interference on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. By trade, Christine Lee is a solicitor. In 2006, she founded the British Chinese Project and became a familiar face in Westminster. She reportedly had a good relationship with David Cameron and was given an award for her work by Theresa May. The security service interference alert identified Christine Lee as knowingly engaged in political interference activities. This isn't about spying in the traditional sense of stealing secrets. It's about influence. Her main entry point into Parliament appears to have been provided by Labour MP Barry Gardner. In total, she has donated over £500,000 to his office. A big chunk of that has been spent employing staff, including her own son. The links between Barry Gardner and Christine Lee have been known about for some time. It was first being talked about publicly in 2017, and yet nothing appeared to happen. Did you discuss policy with her? Uh, no, not in great detail, no. Not um, in great detail? No, I, I, absolutely not. I, I had conversations she with her. She must have got, up, got something out of it, though. I mean, here uh, she is. She's handing well, over all this money. I mean, why was she doing it, then, if she wasn't trying to find out what you were up to as a Labour frontbencher? Well, I, I think she must have felt it was a very poor investment if she did uh, seek to get something out of it. Too many of our political class actually want to cosy up to China because they think that'll guarantee their futures financially and in many other ways. Beijing has rejected the UK's allegations of spying. China says its accusers might have watched too many James Bond movies. This is a very dangerous regime, and if they're now infiltrating parliament and government, then this is serious, serious stuff. Well, they say it's serious stuff, but what are the British actually doing about it? Whatever it is, it's not exactly been big news. You have to really scour the internet to find out. At the time of recording, Christine Lee has not been arrested, but is reportedly under investigation by the security services. Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, who was apparently so appalled by this case, says Lee's actions fell under the criminal threshold. The notice today has gone out to highlight as well that currently the level of action that we can take, and I say we, the state security services, police and CPS, we currently, this is under the criminal threshold. So by putting this alert out today, it puts MPs on notice, it gives the alert about this individual, the type of activity that this individual has been involved in, but also there is on ongoing work in terms of what further measures, actions and steps that we can undertake. And to that end, Patel is promising to introduce new legislation to provide the security services and law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to disrupt the full range of state threats. 
Well, as for the Labour MP Barry Gardner, who received hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations, he's reportedly the subject of a review ordered by the Business Secretary. Of course, Mr Gardner's always registered the donations he received, and so there's no suggestion he broke the law. But his judgment has certainly been called into question, and to be fair, he's not run away from the media spotlight. Why did you take money from Christine Lee, and what due diligence did you do in checking she was who she said she was? Yes, um, quite simply, I was shocked today when I had the meeting with the uh, Director of Parliamentary Security um, to find out that uh, she had been engaged in illegal activity. Um, she and her company were, uh, it was, she was a person who had been fated uh, by Number 10 Downing Street. She was uh, somebody who'd received awards from Theresa May. She was a well-known uh, figure who were, had been fated for her community work. I believed her to be bona fide. I believed her to be genuine. Are you a useful idiot? I mean, why did they choose you? Well... I assume they believed that I was somebody who would play a role uh, in the political system in this country uh, and that they might at some stage uh, be able to leverage that. They haven't been able to. I've made sure that they've not been able to by the precautions that I've taken, by speaking to the security services, by being open and transparent at, in, in all cases, uh, and, and by making sure uh, that actually at all stages I speak my mind whether it's about China or about anything else. Well, Gardner may have received the largest donation, but he wasn't the only one to accept Lee's money. Liberal Democrat MP Ed Davey accepted a much smaller sum of about $6,500 while he was Energy Minister. A £5,000 donation from Christine Lee being reported in November 2013. I mean, is there, is there anything uh, that you yourself this morning would like to apologise for? Well, I was shocked by these revelations. Uh, the donation was taken and registered in the normal way, the correct way. All the rules and guidance were followed. I can't even remember uh, this woman, to be frank. Um, the real issue is how the Chinese government, through different agents, are trying to infiltrate our democracy. We need to make sure, and our secret services need to make sure, that we are fully protected. That is the key thing. Again, there's no suggestion that Ed Davey broke the law, but by accepting a donation from Christine Lee, he has opened himself up to his opponents to ridicule him. In Parliament, as Davey called on the PM to resign over his handling of the pandemic, the PM shot back with a quip in Mandarin. The country can no longer trust him with the nation's health. And the best policy to beat COVID now will be for him to resign. Prime Minister, well, uh, Mr. Speaker, ni hao, as, 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 as we say to the, as, as we say to the right, right on the gentleman. Uh, wrench, wrench in your hand, uh, 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 um, uh, Mr. Speaker. Well, the British Prime Minister in a typically humorous mood, but this is a serious subject, so we're going to go to our serious analyst. We have Anthony Gleese, Professor of Security and Intelligence at the University of Buckingham. Philip Ingram, former colonel in the British military intelligence. In Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we have Nicholas Eftimiades, a former CIA special agent and author of Chinese espionage, operations and tactics. And in Beijing, we have China analyst Ina Tangan. Welcome to all four of you. Um, Anthony Gleese, if I may start with you. I'm getting mixed signals here about how uh, big a threat what MI5 described in their alert is to Britain's democracy. Uh, they would say it's a very grave threat, and at the same time, the actions that have been taken subsequently uh, do not indicate that they are taking it all that seriously. Well, that's right, but that's in part because the legal bar to arrest somebody and try them for espionage in the United Kingdom under English law is extremely high. And what... MI5 is saying. I mean, th this case has many extraordinary aspects to it. But what MI5 is saying is that Christine Lee is the agent of the Chinese Communist Party. And of course, the Chinese Communist Party is the state party of China and therefore a Chinese agent. There's not sufficient uh, evidence to put her on a, a spying charge because the bar is so high. But MPs need to be warned. What's more, 
through this so-called intervention alert. It's extremely rare, it's an extremely rare thing to happen. MI5 has come out of the shadows to not just warn members of parliament, but warn the public that members of parliament have been warned. And this follows a number of similar uh, warnings and alerts from both MI5, the domestic security agency in the United Kingdom, and MI6, Britain's secret intelligence service, about the activities of the Chinese and the things that they are interested in. And that includes also people in my own profession of uh, universities where research is being undertaken. So uh, an extraordinary move, probably the feeling in MI5 is <clears throat> that people in Britain have not been taking the Chinese threat as serious as they right. should have been. The huge donations that were received from Christine Lee were actually, strictly speaking, all above board. They were registered. They were, they were given openly. So isn't it for the UK then to change the way donations are accepted, to tighten up the restrictions on those donations? Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, it's a, it's a scandal in the United Kingdom that we take our democracy so much for granted that we completely ignoring the threats to subvert it. And I have to say that MI5, uh, after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of communism, at one stage even boasted on its website that it did not take subversion seriously. There's espionage, stealing secrets, of course that goes on, but there is also the drip, drip, drip of subversion, the changing of minds. Now, um, it may be the case that Mr. Gardner is uncertain why the Chinese Communist Party should have given him half a million uh, pounds. Perhaps he thinks they like the colour of his eyes. But for those of us who observe these matters more closely, surely the answer is that the two things that Mr. Gardner claimed an expertise in, nuclear energy and uh, international trade, they are big targets for Chinese right. intelligence. And what MI5 have done is made it impossible for anybody to work with Christine Lee in the future. She right. has been neutralised without being convicted. And uh, they pointed to uh, the fact that people in the United Kingdom need to be much more careful about accepting Chinese money. Just in a gardener's defence, he said he didn't know it was coming from the Communist Party, he believed it to be coming from someone he trusted and a friend and so on. Um, let me ask you, Philip Ingram, what exactly do you think the Chinese hoped to get via uh, Christine Lee? Well, it's influence. Um, and it's influence in those that she's interacting with. But it's also picking up little snippets of information, whether it be um, someone's contact details, their personal telephone details, their travel details, so that that can be passed into the wider intelligence machinery and then used to target other assets and other agents to exploit it further. It's you know, a game of death of a thousand cuts. You gather tiny little snippets of information mm. from lots of different sources and put them together in a picture in a way that you want to achieve it. I so she was put in to influence and, and garner support from as many people as she possibly could. Yeah. I mean, Gardner said he had no idea. He took the donations in good faith. He also hired Christine Lee's son uh, on yes. merit. Uh, you're laughing. I think a lot of people might find it hard to believe. Um, what were the uh, possible uh, concerns, security concerns? I mean, no one is saying that the son uh, is in the frame whatsoever, but what are the, how he, should he have been screened? No, but he's, he's, he's in a constituency office. He will have access to um, the members' details of the Houses of Parliament, the House of Lords, and lots of the decision-makers across the country. That is invaluable background intelligence. A lot of this material, um, you through very detailed open-source research, you can find anyway. So you, it was below, as, as Anthony said, below that threshold of legality. And remember, we live in an open society, a free society, where we have to allow people to go on around their, their normal lives. Mm. Uh, and it's clear that MI5 you understood the potential threat that she was for quite some time. We saw the articles back in 2017 uh, around her. But MI5 will have been monitoring her for all of this period of time before they felt that they needed to carry out uh, a disrupt operation and stop her from having any further access, you which is when they brought this, this, this statement out. Yeah, you mentioned the article in 2017. Let's have a quick look at it. It's from The Times. 
Uh, money, influence and the Beijing connection is the headline, and the article describes how Li had already, at that point, uh, d donated over a quarter of a million dollars uh, to the Labour MP, Barry Gardner, and how he took on her son as a policy researcher. Why do you think, five years after that was already out in the public domain, MI5 suddenly made its move with this incredibly rare, the first alert of its kind for China? There's a couple of reasons behind this. Uh, one, um, your MI5 during that time, before that, up to that and post that, will have been um, analysing her connections, trying to work out her network, trying to work out what influence she's got and see what other agents, overt, covert, um, and ones which may be trying to steal secrets are around the place. Two, they'll have been gathering evidence to see if she gets over the bar for a criminal prosecution. Um, and then three, they probably because uh, I would have done in a counterintelligence role, tried to turn her or turn some of her contacts to act as double agents back into China again. And then when they mm. found that none of that was working uh, and they chose the appropriate time and felt that she might be getting into somewhere which would give her more detailed access or they just exhausted all their options, they carry out a disrupt operation to make quite, sure she can't do it anymore. I'd be quite interested to get um, the US perspective on this. Uh, Nicholas, you are a former CIA agent yourself. Um, what do you make of MI5's uh, sudden move after five years of her being out in the open like this? Well, I, I don't think MI5 had any choices. Uh, they haven't particularly been great on China for years. Um, it, it hasn't been a primary concern in the UK. Uh, so now all of a sudden they're faced with this situation. They don't have law that allows them to act. So they do exactly what you would expect they disrupted the operation. It was pretty much their only option at this point. So they have a lot of work to do, and the UK has a lot of work to do in shoring up its defences against uh, influence activities like this. The Home Secretary is planning to shore up the defences against such uh, influence activities such as this. Have you any lessons from the United States for her? Yes, absolutely. Uh, implemented the Foreign Agents Registration Act to counter Nazi propaganda back in 1938. And we make a distinction between covert influence and overt influence. Uh, we make agents of foreign governments register as such. And if they're caught acting without registering, we have legal action we can take against them. I know we've been talking this entire time as if it was a foregone conclusion uh, that Christine Lee uh, was acting in the way that MI5 suggests. Uh, we've been careful to say that they are allegations made against her. What is the reaction in Beijing? What are the uh, Chinese officials and so on making of this story there? Well, they've uh, issued a blanket denial, which would be uh, the, the par for the course, no matter what the situation is. But I would suggest to people that uh, instead of uh, this kind of Dr. No, uh, James Bond stuff, uh, they, they should really look at the situation for what it is. And this is uh, a young uh, a woman who, at 12 years old, immigrated to Northern Ireland, where she was isolated, built, uh, literally got her kind of Horatio Alger story, became a solicitor. And she was basically using these photographs to impress her Chinese clients. She was in uh, helping people uh, with immigration. Then uh, it became investments, helping their children get into schools, you know, having a picture with you near Xi Jinping uh, next to, uh, you know, uh, no, <laughs> prime ministers is certainly something that works in China. It certainly works in the United States and also uh, in Great Britain. This is not unusual. Uh, this is simply this, this woman set out to follow the path of, of money and power. And now she's being victimized in a geopolitical uh, game uh, that's being cynically played. And, uh, you think I, she's I being victimized, Ina? Uh, I, 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 I know. What makes you so sure she's being victimized and that MI5 went... Uh, let, me, let, me, let me quote from their alert. Um, it reports that Christine Lee works for the United Front Work Department of the Chinese Communist Party and that the UFWD actors seek to deceive, corrupt or coerce politicians into supporting the objectives of the CCP and to silence voices that are critical of the CCP, which is a, a very chilling descript description and uh, very anti-democratic. I know, why would you doubt that report about her? 
Well, uh, I was a prosecutor and a lawyer, and I believe that uh, when you make accusations, you generally bring something to the forefront. Uh, we've heard uh, a couple of security analysts uh, give this kind of song and dance about all the things that they would have tried. Well, generally in that s such instances, you, you have people being arrested, cutouts, all this kind of stuff that uh, you read about in Jean Le Carré's uh, books about spies who came in from the cold, yet we have none of that. Uh, simply we have is a, a series of allegations, as you pointed out early in the show, that are being backed up by a bunch of hearsay. Uh, none of the people have uh, produced any evidence against her. That's uh, a Philip come in. I was going to say, there's you know, most intelligence operations, when you're running a counterintelligence operation, uh, you're not going to bring it out in the public domain. Uh, you, unless you get, get over the uh, bar for prosecution, uh, there is no evidence. It's, it's all intelligence that you've gathered. And there's no need to bring that out in the, into the public uh, domain as to what's going on. So you know, the, the MI5 security service will have been looking for exploit opportunities um, rather than prosecution opportunities. Uh, it, it is very common for the Chinese to use legitimate individuals um, to try and approach uh, people that they want to gain for influence. It is a well-known and well-practiced approach. I know. Not just for the Chinese. Every country in the world does it. Well, I think that's, that's probably a point that Ina would firmly agree with. Ina, uh, just quickly, uh, we've talked about the UFWD. Um, apparently, last year, a vice minister of the UFWD said it was committed to strengthening the unity and solidarity of all Chinese people at home and abroad and as part of its mission to build a strong and prosperous country. Does that mean that the UFWD expects Chinese people abroad uh, who have become citizens of those other countries to still put their allegiance to China first? No, it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's no difference than the National Endowment for Democracy, which uh, was created in essence to spread the, you know, the US uh, uh, message on uh, everything uh, ideological. I mean, it, it, my, my learned colleague forgot to mention that one of the prime uh, things that intelligence agencies do is create disinformation campaigns. So without any proof with this idea that I can't tell you what I know, uh, you don't have anything. So until something's produced, I would say that you should I'm... hold in abeyance any kind of lynch mob oh. that uh, you want to put together. Let's, let's, go, the, to, let's uh, go to Nicholas. Traffic. Nicholas. Come in. So, so, sorry, this was my world for my whole life. So um, first off, the uh, Chinese People Friendship Association is registered in the United States under the United Front Works Department, okay? So it's a clear association with the Chinese government, number one. Number two, MI5 already noted that she was getting finance from individuals in Hong Kong and mainland China. OK, so there's a difference between covert influence. So why don't you name them? And over influence that's done, you know, straight in the open. Number three, the United Front Work Department has several dozen agencies under it and hundreds of offices and associations globally that are working to. And here's the difference between that and the National Endowment of Democracy. They work covertly to influence foreign governments and society. There is a great difference between doing it overtly, saying, oh, by the way, we're funded by the Chinese government, and doing it covertly without any reach back into affiliations. And that's the distinction here. I know you can have a quick response. Yeah, it's the largest, biggest bunch of malarkey, and I understand that he's in the disinformation department, but the fact is, uh, you know, I'm not denying that China does spying. I think we all know, we all countries do it. But this woman was not a spy. If she was, she's the most inept one that I've ever seen. The, the money that she was throwing at this guy, uh, it, it, all she was getting was a job for her son. Come on. OK, so what was uh, the know, money for? for I know. I, I know. So the question, I know. So the question is, why spend, yes. you know, $800,000, if that's how much it is, on uh, this uh, Barry Gardner, if she wasn't getting more than just a job for her son? What, what was it all about? Why, where was the money going? What was it for? Oh my Oh, the, the money was going to get access. She wanted to get access to these uh, politicians. She wanted pictures of herself uh, with uh, whoever she could. She was not just playing labor. She was also playing the conservatives. She was up for any kind of fundraiser out there. Why? Because she wanted the pictures. These pictures are invaluable to Chinese clients who are investing millions, tens of millions of dollars in Great Britain to get their uh, green cards. Uh, you know, visas, et cetera, like this.
Philip, a quick and final answer from you. Uh, going forward, how is Britain supposed to protect itself from what it calls the threat from China? It's doing a number of things. It's changing the Official Secrets Act and bringing it into uh, the modern era to recognize um, modern technology. Um, it's carrying out these disrupt operations that MI5 has done, and we're seeing MI5 and MI6 coming out of um, the, the, the secrecy that they've hidden behind for so many years to come into the fore. And that will then help educate um, not just our politicians, our business leaders, but our general public as well. And those are, that's all key to it. OK, Philip Ingram, Nicholas Eftimiedes, uh, Anthony Gleese and Ina Tangen, thank you all for your contributions to The Nexus today. And thank you at home and on your phones for watching. Remember, if you want to see this or any of our previous episodes, do go to our channel on YouTube. Just type in Nexus TRT World. Until next week, then, goodbye.